In today's message, the Father encourages you to allow the power of agreement to bring about breakthrough. It will be done if two of you come to an agreement that any one thing on earth will be touched. The promise that my word makes in its whole is that. Please put an end to all discord and contention. Refuse to give the adversary the opportunity to play a game with you in order to maintain discord and disagreement with your fellow believers in Christ. My people are engaged in conflict with one another when they ought to be engaged in conflict for the faith that was once revealed to the Christians. My intention was not for you to shake your fist in the face of your brother or sister when I called you. Put aside the demand that you be heard and acknowledged immediately. On this day, come together as one and experience the anointing that flows down from the beard, even Aaron's beard, when the body comes together to fight against their common adversary. Please know that I do have a home that is a blessing forevermore for you to reside in, my dear. It is the area where you place a higher emphasis on being in perfect harmony and agreement with your fellow believers in Christ than you do on your own personal opinion. You will be able to ascend in prayer and watch change come about as a result of coming into accord with the real needs and challenges that are being faced around you. Put all petty arguments and disagreements to the side. In order to be in a right relationship, it is not necessary for you to be right. It is more accurate to say that you are contributing to the problem rather than contributing to the solution when you prioritize your right to have an opinion over the need to break relationships that are not necessary. As I speak to you today, I urge you to put an end to all forms of warfare and to make the decision to lower yourself and locate that place of humility and contrition that is always included inside the protection of my favor and blessing. When one comes to the house of conflict, it is preferable to be silent rather than to be heard. This day, the Father encourages us to let go of the past. Because I do not want you to be burdened by the past, by guilt, or by grief, there is no version of your existence that you can envisage that I would want you to undergo. Get rid of it. It is possible that other people will strive very hard to bring to your attention your shortcomings and shortcomings, but I emphasize that this is not by my command. Get to your feet. It is time to pick yourself up and go on. Remember the words of David in Psalm 51, which he uttered after he had failed so badly that he prayed, Against you and against you only have I sinned. In the end, regardless of what other people may think, your biggest debt, and in fact, your only debt, is to me, and that obligation was paid for on the cross. Let there be an end to all suffering, says the Father. Allow my judgments to be applied to the past, and accept the purification that Calvary has to offer. Accept the advice that is so frequently repeated, which is, go and sin no more. There are some things in your life that you have done incorrectly. There have been errors committed. The repercussions have, on occasion, been rather embarrassing and even horrifying. It is important to keep in mind that the blood that was poured on the cross was sufficient to cover you and make you clean. God affirms that you are spotless. You have obtained purity as a result of the word that I have spoken to you. At the moment that you surrender yourself to my mercy and present your life as an offering of service before my throne, this is the share that you will receive. What the Father has to say to you, I will be remembered as the one who saves the best for last today. I will be known as that person. Indeed, this is the case, as your later years will be more successful than your earlier years. Also, the latter part of your life will be more blessed than the beginning of your life. As the early light, I will come to you as the rain, as the latter rain and the former rain upon the earth. And you will cry out for the latter rain of my spirit, and I will raise you up. You will live in my sight, and you will know me. And I will come to you as the rain. For the very end, 
I have reserved the very finest. Make a scream, a scream for the rain that will come later. According to the Father, it is the third day, even the third day of Hosea and the third day of the wedding in Cana, and I transform the water into wine, and it is the best in the house, surpassing all prior vintages that have come before it by a significant margin. In light of the fact that the vintage of the rain that came before has been of a particular excellence, and the upcoming vintage is of an excellence that is above anything you have ever experienced before. My people will bring approval and congratulate their bridegroom, and there will be a great deal of celebration and rejoicing because the latter rain has come upon the earth, the great outpouring of my spirit upon all flesh, bringing revival in the land. These things will take place because the master of the wedding feast in Cana brought approval to the bridegroom for the best wine that was saved for last. According to the Lord, the vats of the new wine that was produced during this exceptional vintage would flow and fill the containers and new wineskins to the point of overflowing. The Father asks you to ascend to a higher level today. When I was 2,000 years old, I went down into the depths of the earth, further into the abyss of chaos and sorrow than you will ever be able to go. At that same instant, I went ahead and dealt with every single shadow that you would ever have to navigate. It is not necessary for me to perform that piece of job again. It is finished. The work is complete. At this moment, I am calling you up and out of the muck and despair that you are experiencing as a result of your situation into the vicinity of being seated with me. In addition to the things that Calvary has already accomplished on your behalf, there is nothing else that can be attempted. Because the completed task is at your disposal, there is no need to wait for the hand of heaven to make it happen. In order to shake oneself out of the sluggishness of despair and the sensation of hopelessness, shake yourself. The situation is not dismal, and the trajectory of events is not gloomy. It is the enemy's falsehood that you have said. If you put up a fight against him, he will run away from you. The first step on your journey forward is to make a decision. Will you wallow in misery and despair, or will you choose to trust the positive report? The phrase, make the best of things, is unnecessary because I have better, best, and highest heart's desire waiting for you as your personal outcome when you refuse to be a victim and simply move forward, expecting my word to be true in your life and my promise to hold up for you as it has for countless thousands of people since the beginning of time. Today, the Father instructs us to search for the gift that I bestow upon you each and every day. I cherish the fact that I was able to provide. My very essence is that of a giver, and you will never come before me that you will not leave with your arms weighed down with the kindness that I have bestowed upon you. In the course of your devoted labor in my kingdom, I will make available to you the bountiful resources of heaven to fulfill all of your need in life. Before I release answered prayer, you need to understand that I am not conducting a fact check on your exemplary track record of moral behavior. Both the just and the unjust are subject to my downpour. Even when your life is not faultless and free of sin, I will continue to support and uphold you anyway. In no way do I hunt for an excuse to keep something from you. When you turn a faithful heart toward my spirit and my word, my resources are there ready to be activated in your life. My resources are waiting waiting for you. Faith serves as the catalyst that brings abundance of resources to you in every aspect of your life where you are in need. Continue to look and anticipate that the supply will be sufficient to fulfill all of your requirements. Ensure that your heart is open and honest, and do not disregard the aspects of your personality and thought process that are in direct opposition to our shared identity. Always keep in mind that my goodness is a catalyst for transformation. Through my goodness, I bring about the repentance of men. If I graciously offered my one and only Son to you on the cross 2,000 years ago, why would I withhold any other benefit or any blessing of lesser value from you? 
The things that I did for you on the cross were not anything that you earned, and you do not earn anything else that I do on your behalf on a daily basis. Your reaction to my constancy is not the acquisition of certain benefits that are not yours in the first place as an extension of my unconditional love, rather, it is the alignment of your character and thinking with my heart. Please accept my love and my gifting today, and give it permission to bring about all the essential changes in your life and in your heart right now. Today, the Father encourages you to be unwavering in your faith. Instead of relying on your flesh, you should be steadfast in your faith. The one who is made of flesh desires to keep his hold on your thoughts and your feelings in order to prevent you from experiencing my best. Refuse to capitulate to the demands that the natural man imposes on you. Be aware of the fact that opinions contain a fatal quality that will cause you to lose control of your destiny. I have not called you to have a viewpoint, rather, I have called you to remain rooted in the Christian faith. You will produce a great deal of fruit if you continue to abide in the vine that I am. Have you been producing a lot of fruit? Permit the pruning of opinion to take place in your thinking until only my mind is discovering leaf and blossom and substance on the branches of your inner man that are anchored in me. This will take place until only my mind is finding these things. Opinions can become strongholds and offenses when they become so weighty that they penetrate your spirit and become ingrained in your beliefs. Through cultivating a love for my word, you can combat the destructive impact of opinion that you have created for yourself. The purported truth that detracts from my character and commands authority over my spirit that resides within you is not truth at all. Those who put their faith in my word will find great peace, and they will not be angered by anything. Have you been insulted? Progress further. You are living in a location that is too close to the surface, where the waves of ungodliness carry out their disgrace on a daily basis all over the world. You are to respond to the deep calls unto deep of my spirit and descend into the depths, where the pure currents of my spirit will wash and cleanse you for the day that lies ahead as well as the destiny that awaits all those who persistently stay in me. This day, the Father encourages us to refrain from rationalizing away our blessings. I consider those things that are carved in stone by the natural mind to be of little consequence. The things that you believe will never change, the things that have always been with you, the things that have been a barrier for you, and the things that are slowing you down are like the fine dust on the balance, and they will be swept away in an instant by the work that I do. The strongholds that impede your progressive progress in my kingdom are comprised of the verities and truths that will never be questioned by the natural mind. The moment has come to destroy those strongholds, for they are an enemy to the plan that I have for your life. It is there that I am trying to transform and bring about change that is beyond your expectations, thus it is important that you learn to examine what the natural mind and the carnal mind never hold up to inspection. Under no circumstances should you ever assume that things will remain the same forever. God declares that everything in life is under my control, and that I am constantly trying to guide you along the route that will lead to the fulfillment of your deepest heart's desire and your most ambitious ambition. According to what degree of collaboration are you willing to provide me with? To what extent do you wish for things to get better in your life circumstances? If I were to ask you to give up something, would you be willing to give up even the things that symbolize your tender loves and personal investments? Figure out how to comply without insisting on knowing the reason. You should be willing to obey without providing an explanation to your natural mind. You should simply know in your spirit that I am directing you and correcting you according to my good pleasure, and as a result, you can have faith in the outcome that I have in mind for you. This morning, the Father asks, what else could possibly go in the correct direction? When it comes to your life, that is the model that I am aiming toward. 
When it comes to your circumstances, the Lord says, I am all about bringing heaven down to earth. I have no other intention than to bless, increase, and promote you. I have no other plan. Stop listening to those who profess to represent me and who insinuate that I am not representing you. I am aware that there are aspects of your life that you intend to alter, and you are looking to me as the person who will bring about the necessary change. However, I want you to be aware of the following, I am the one who initiates change in heaven, but you are the one who initiates change on earth. What am I trying to say? What I am saying is that if you give me some cooperation, I will give you some change. This is what the Father is saying. The opponent will tell you that you have already done everything, paid everything, and sacrificed everything, and that there is nothing else for you to do. Dismiss any and all such thinking. Taking a position of passive observation will not bring about the establishment of my kingdom in your life. The actions that you are taking are the reason why things are the way that they are. In order to achieve a different outcome, you will need to take a different approach. Is there anything that you might potentially do differently from what you are doing right now? The first and most important thing you should do is disengage from the self-centered, self-interested, and misery-inducing pity party that your adversary is trying to instill in you. As the God who pulled Jonah out of the belly of the whale, I am the one who did it. In the event that you had one more day, one more hour, or one more minute of yielding, consistent, and obediently pouring out of yourself in my name to people around you who are languishing in darkness, what do you think I might do in your life? Your initial step should be to direct your attention on other people, since whatever you accomplish for other people, I will accomplish for you as well. It is not my desire for you to be unable to hear and act upon that mandate, as this will put your feet in concrete and leave you without a constructive path to move forward on your journey. According to God, if you are a vessel that is poured out, even emptied out, to other people in every way that is conceivable, then I will open the skies in return and fill you to overflowing beyond anything that you could ever imagine. At this moment, the Father tells you that your life does not lack a purpose. From the first century to the present day, I have encouraged every believer to walk in a manner that is commensurate with the vocation to which they have been called. I did this via the Apostle Paul. Beloved, there is a person who is calling out to you. There is a mantle that is waiting for you to take it upon yourself and make it rest on your shoulders. There is no inaccuracy in your life. Your birth was not the result of a random occurrence in the biological realm. For the sake of this hour and this time, I brought you into existence on earth. The call that has been placed upon your life is genuine, and it is waiting for the occasion of your trust and obedience to activate the grace that I have released in order for you to fulfill that call and discover that you are faithful. This is not something that any man can choose for you in terms of your destiny, it is something that you are meant to be. I must state that you are both a priest and a king. It is my glory to conceal, and it is your glory as a king under the king of kings to discover, search for, and seek out that the portion of the earth that is rightfully yours to fulfill. One more time, I want to emphasize that your life is not an adventure. I have placed within you my unfathomable potential, which is supported by the entirety of heaven's resources, so that you may, and in fact, come to the full and complete manifestation of everything that I have planned to be in you and through you on this day. Get up and get moving. As you move forward, you will find that all of the things that you believe you are lacking will be provided for you as you start moving out. Today, the Father instructs you to conceal my, yes, within your heart. Right now, each and every one of my promises is a yes and an amen to you. Neither a maybe nor perhaps even exists. I am a God who affirms. 
I have responded to the cries of the heart that is filled with faith with the eternal and good response of the death on the cross. Cling to the yes and amen of my promise even when the circumstances of life tell you no to pursue your goals. It is imperative that you never let doubt, dissatisfaction, resentment, or skepticism prevent you from experiencing joy. This day, you should be aware that the eyes of heaven are upon you. Refuse to be disheartened or disheartened by failure. I want you to have the intention of believing against all concepts of unbelief and hoping against all hope that you will have what I have promised you, because I am saying yes to you now. Raise your voice and declare, be removed, in the face of the mountains of hardship that are present in your life. Do not allow yourself to become preoccupied with the situation that appears to be so overpowering. There is a prerequisite for success that is established by my promises in your life. My love for you is the deciding factor in this situation. When you find yourselves feeling disheartened, do not forget the numerous instances in the past in which I have demonstrated my faithfulness. It will be discovered that I am faithful once more. I am going to deliver, lead, and assist you through the issue that you are currently facing. The Father declares, I am God, and I am over the storm. It is my intention to bring the adversary and all of his henchmen to your knees. I will put your foot in the neck of the person who shows up solely with the intention of stealing, killing, and destroying. You are going to be aware of my victory, declares the Father. This was accomplished at Calvary 2000 years ago. It is now that the Father instructs us to reject negativity. You will become depleted and will stumble unintentionally if you allow negativity to consume you. Keeping a negative attitude will prevent you from receiving the blessings and benefits that are currently on the verge of coming into your life. Refuse to accept the truth of the situation. Not a single pessimist can be found throughout the kingdom. There is not a single instance of sarcasm that can be found in the attributes of Christ. Let there not be a single mention of it among you. It is important to be aware that your spirit will become tainted if you are negative or if you expose yourself to individuals or influences that are negative. The problems that arise in life originate from the heart. If you give credence to the bad, it will serve as the foundation for the subsequent events that take place in your life. When you are in the presence of negative people, you must come to the realization that you cannot behave in an unguarded manner. It is necessary for you, beloved, to alter the delicate friendships and ties that you have in order to rid your inner man of the poison of negativity. Master the art of not responding to them again, as well as refraining from engaging in their banter or chat. You are not superior to them, but you have the ability to make a more responsible decision. Make the decision to live so that you can live. Make the decision to adopt a spirit that is as uncomplicated as that of a young child. Don't engage in any form of one-upmanship or black humor. By doing so, you are able to save yourself from the trap that many of my children and grandchildren have fallen into, from which they have never been able to extract themselves again. Today, the Father explains that the Spirit is the one who moves money. As your faith in who I am grows, you are transferring the currency of the kingdom to your account in the glory. This is happening as your confidence in me grows. I assured you that I would fulfill all of your requirements in accordance with the wealth that is in the glory. To what end is that glory? You are the one who possesses it now. The solution to all of your needs, as well as the needs of people around you, can be found within you, within the glory, and within the embryo. Your responses are not coming down from some ethereal dimension that is beyond your ability to interact with. I am present within you, and within me is the possibility of obtaining anything and everything that you might possibly ask me for. 
I am the very essence of you. There are certain people who talk in my name with the intention of praising a state of poverty for you that they themselves would never willingly volunteer for. This group is comprised of those who are dressed in uniform. If there is no poverty in heaven, then why would I chose to develop my character in you by putting you in a position of poverty? The phrase, as in heaven, so on earth, is the default template that I use for your life. Can you even begin to fathom the extent to which heaven is stocked with provisions? There is no shortage, budget deficit, or inflation. There is not a single aspiration or requirement that is not satisfied by the providing of my hand. Make use of what I have provided and let it flow out in response to the requirements of people who are in your immediate vicinity. It is comparable to blood. Atrophy, mortality, and decay are the outcomes of not allowing it to flow. As you give out of the few resources you have, my boundless bounty will find you and flow through you, resulting in an abundance of surplus in the lives of others as well as in your own life. To do so is to gamble on one's own glory.